What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today I got a special guest for you guys. It's the rapper Coop the Trill, but it's not just being a rapper that I have him on for. He is uh, very unique in a lot of the marketing tactics that he uses. Um, he's a businessman as well. Um, he's been a moderator for some conferences. He just has an overall unique perspective and approach to how he's moving throughout the business. So we'll get into why. Um, I think some of the things he, he's doing is interesting. But first, I want to go ahead and bring you Hoop the Trill. What's up, man? What's going on, Brad, man? How you doing, man? Good, good, man. So, like, first off, I mean, you're a rapper. You're in St. Louis. Are you from St. Louis? Yes, sir. Born and raised. How How did you know that you were going to be rapping? How long have you been in? I've been in, honestly, professionally, I've been only rapping. Like, I released my first project, like, this year, but I've been rapping for festival about like maybe for a long time, but maybe two years, I would say. The reason why I say that is because that's when I started taking it serious. Okay. But I've been rap rapping and writing for a long time. Okay. So the way you move is pretty interesting, man. Hold on. Hold on. Put your, uh, can you get your face down? There we go. So people can see you the whole time. There we go. There we okay, go. Okay. I get you. I just want to make sure you hear me. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Right. So the way you move is pretty interesting um, in comparison to a lot of rappers that are up and coming. Um, I definitely have seen your grind, noticed your grinds. Um, we've had our encounters. Now, yeah. tell me, what were you doing before rapping? Now, I, I didn't know that you were only, you've only been rapping for like a year or taking it seriously for like two years. Where did you get your, the way you move from? Uh, basically, man, um, <laughs> you. <laughs> um, uh, Wendy Day, um, Gary V, Dame Dash, Nipsey Hussle, Master P, Jay Prince. I just study all the greats. I study, and I'll put you in that category as well, because the information I receive from you, man, is just like actually executing them. It's like your stuff work, man. So all of those combined, man, and going to the Rico Love Music Conferences, you know, two years in a row, going there, just, you know, everything that I learned, just apply it. And, you know, it's really just all about acknowledgement, man. See, but that's really what I'm talking about, though, man. I mean, I understand, you know, you appreciate the information I, I give out and all these other people give out some great information. But mm -hmm. to actually take what you're learning and apply it quickly and stay real steady and consistent and go hard, that doesn't just come from anywhere. So what were you doing before that? If you could talk, no, I don't know what you might have no, done. I get, you, I, get you, I get you what I was doing before, man. You know, uh, I always had a job. You feel what I'm saying? But, like... To be real with you, you know, I was my daddy, man, my daddy. Like, I was fortunate enough to have a daddy in my life. You know, my daddy always was a hustler. Okay. So, you know, everything that he did, I, I pretty much watched. He had me around him for a lot of situations, and I just watched how he just conducted business. So, you know, when it, it just came organically, you know what I mean, to me just like, you know, how to talk to people, how to network, and, you know, and then my mother, she's very corporate. You know, she got, she's the one that got me the job. So, mm. you know, she taught me politics and, you know, how to how to conduct myself in the corporate environment. So that's why, you know, I say I give a, a best of both worlds, you know what I mean? So that's how, and both of them are very ambitious people. So, they, you know, just, they just instill that in me. Dope, dope, dope. Okay. So let's talk about one of the most ambitious things that I've gotten to see you do and one of the more unique things, particularly when it comes to marketing. The whole smart shirt scenario. <laughs> like, first of all, explain smart shirts to other people who, you know, like try to paint that visual. I'll try to remember to put a visual up, but try to paint that visual. Right. Okay. Basically, a smart shirt is basically an NFC and steel shirt. It's an NFC, which means near field communication shirt. We all have it in our phones, a lot of our phones. And it's basically, it can scan like either a barcode or QR code, but it's mainly NFC technology. And what I did, I had an NFC sticker on my shirt, and it was through a company called Intercell. And they specialize in NFC technology, and I got it from them. And basically, you can scan your phone on my shirt, and then my music and all my videos pop up. 
basically. All right, so you got something in the shirt. People take their phone up to your shirt. Your music and yeah. pop up. Yes. Your right, phone, yes. like that. Now, what? Yes. How do people react to it, typically? Like I was an alien. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, to be honest with you, man, I, like St. Louis is kind of like a small market. So, like, we're not used to seeing things like this. So, they were looking at me like I was a foreigner. So, I'm like, how did you do that? I almost looked like I was a lad in some with a genie. Like, it was just like, hold on, what's going on? And, like, I, I got two two type of responses. Like, one of them was like, man, that's innovative. You know, then the other one was like, kind of went over their head. They was just like, okay. <laughs> that was it, you know. So, so they didn't even get it. They were just like, all right, yeah. I was interested in her, but whatever type thing. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Interesting. So when you when you do that, do they have to do anything on their phone? Or oh yeah, they have to I tell them I tell them to go on their phone and uh under their settings it's something that's it says NFC in near field communication. They you know, tap it. Once it in, once it's enabled, boom, all they gotta do is just tap the back of their phone on my smart shirt and boom, there you go. And then, you know, my music, my single pops up in all my social media and all of that. Dope. So, what made you even think to do something like that? Or how'd you discover that? I discovered it actually watching uh, Sway in the Morning, right? Sway in the Morning, he was interviewing Above the Law or whatever. Above the Law, the old rap group that came out on Ruthless Records years ago. Yeah. And I saw it, you know, because I always listen to the OGs, you know what I mean, to basically so I can last longer, you know, in a nutshell. So they demonstrated it on they demonstrated it on Sway. And I was like, whoa. And they said Intercell. So I immediately got off of there and, <laughs> and looked up Intercell, went to the website, got in contact with the CEO, you know, we talked and then he was just like, look, just send me some search and I'll give you, you know, I'll give you a sample and boom, and it went from there. I was like, you're in contact with the CEO. Do you know what they yeah. No, we'll, we'll, we'll shove that conversation <laughs> right now. Um, right, right. What you've done outside of just taking this stuff for marketing, right, and doing like a podcast, you have so many things that you're trying to do in the way you're moving. Have you found yeah. something in your personal um, journey that you feel like mm -hmm. you tried but it didn't work, but you hear a lot of people say it will work, but it didn't work for you? Uh. Mm, that was a good. That's a good one. I tried. Uh, not necessarily because I don't know. I, I kind of. Hmm. I guess. Um. Uh, having, because I don't have a team per se. You know what I mean? It's, I call myself a one man brand because I pretty much do everything by myself. So, if anything, like I, I like I would like a team, but I need more people around so it's like it's, it's like people like oh, do this and do have so and so do this but it's like i don't really have you no know, reliable people around me, so i can be around myself you know that's the sense but other than that like everything else that i don't i would say this like i can say look you spoke on a podcast the podcast is great you know the anchor podcast that i have the trio talk podcast is great it's strict it's strictly audio though so it's where I got the interview any day on it and things of that nature. But I've learned that, you know, more visual, we're moving into more of a visual situation in the future. So I learned YouTube was a better fit for me. You know? YouTube is better for you. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Because I hear a lot of people say, I mean, a lot of people tell me I should do a podcast, but, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be told then, bro. Trust me, I will. <laughs> I'm on YouTube, man. I'm I'm good on YouTube right now. Um, yeah, that's podcast enough. <laughs> yeah, you know that, that's just more work. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I understand. Trust me, I understand. But this whole one brand man band thing, I hear so many artists doing it. You found some levels of success uh, anyway. You uh -huh. got least acknowledgement where you're able to talk to a CEO of a company and yeah. you know, use his technology in an innovative way. You you're on the the uh, panel for a music conference. Right, you yeah, know, you've gotten to even interview and you know uh, rub elbows with a few interesting people. Yeah, most definitely. But with with what you being said, you still talk about the limitations of not having a team. So, what's been the biggest drawbacks for you, and 
and what are you looking for when it comes to building a team? Um, mainly just the uh, like you said, man. So much work, you know. You got so much work. I, I know you understand. Like just, um, I would like to put out more videos. You know, I would like to put out. You know, I would like to put out. Yeah, mainly just putting out more content as far as like videos and music. But you know, at the end of the day, it's like everybody's got their own agenda. So, you know, it's just like, I took it upon myself. I was like, okay, content is key. I learned that from you and Gary V. Like, content is key. So it's just like, okay, cool. Well, since I can't, you know, shoot or give this videographer, like, hey, can I, you know, let's shoot a video, like, consistently. It's like, okay, I just made, I just started doing my own YouTube videos. No you know, really just invest in myself or whatever. And, um, yeah, basically, that's really, off the top, that's pretty much like the biggest hurdle that I'm, I'm eventually going to jump over. But it's just one of the main things is constantly putting out like constant content, like visually. Okay. So that's the thing I would really like to do. And the music conference that, you, that you're going to be a part of and you'll be on the panel for again, what's the name of it? Uh, Back to Basics. Back to the Basics, you are a business music conference. All right. I remember. So what's really dope is you mentioned to me that you guys are not only going to be, you know, doing the regular music conference thing in terms of giving people just knowledge and all that type of stuff, but you're also mm -hmm. going to have music supervisors there. Yes. Right? Yes. And everybody's yes. like are looking for placements. Well, the ones that are trying to get to the money quicker is, is looking for placements because placements. Is exactly. Um, exactly. Like how many music supervisors are, are y'all probably going to have there? Right now, one. Just one, but yeah, just one. But he's 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 uh, he's been around for a minute. Okay, right now he's been around for a minute, so you know he's very, he's a vet at what he does. So most definitely, like and like I said, he gonna be looking to get some artists and some producers, some placements. So you know, I mean, at the conference, so it's gonna be it's gonna be well worth it. Put it like that. No, because I mean, the music supervisors that I know of, I don't really. You know, rub elbows with one personally um, too much, but the ones I've had the opportunity to like talk to and things like that, they have like a lot of different projects. So I mean, yes. you know, one like one needs thousands of songs. Yes, you know the system. Yes. So yes, okay, I, I can yeah. see. Yeah, you got a you got a catalog. <laughs> like yeah. it. and the placements can be like, I mean, I know people who. Man, they just started their career. They don't have any followers. They don't have any real connections, but they happen to land a placement through, like, just reaching out uh, to a few companies and, mm -hmm. you know, 5, 10K just off of one placement. Just That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the whole point of it being that you are a business mm -hmm. conference. Right. Because we're shedding, we're, we're like, like how you said, man, like, are you in it for the fame or are you in it for the money? Yep. I mean, if you're really if you're really independent, you you about the money. So you know, we're gonna teach you how to get it. We're gonna teach you how, you know the proper proper ways of maneuver to get your money, basically. Right. You gonna have to know where the, the money's coming from for sure. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, cool. Sir. So, what's one of the more interesting things that you are working on recently, man? I know you you dropped the project not too long ago. Yeah, I dropped the project uh, called Aggressive Intelligence back on March twenty third. Of this year and the reason why I called it that because I wanted to uh, I wanted to basically let people know who I was within like two words yeah. and the, and I got that I got I actually because I was like how can I say book smart and street smart at the same time right and I was like uh, so honestly I heard Nipsey Hussle on a song and he was like effortless call it aggressive intelligence I said bingo <laughs> bingo so I took those two and I was like, that explains me all day. So, and that's what made me, you know, title it that. It was only five songs, but it was like, I've, I've not received, honestly, I've not received not one bad review <laughs> from that, from that project. It was only five songs. Okay. You know? And they say it's, it's set up, they say I made it like a, a playlist, but it's still cohesive. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So that was one of the accomplishments. I actually got a placement. Uh, one of my songs from there got placed on the uh, Gary V. blog. Really? How did yeah. you get placed on the blog? Because I, um, 
I know his editor, one of his editors, you know, he got like a hundred <laughs> editors and I happened to run it to one of his editors. And uh, he basically like heard one of the songs. He heard a lot of the, he heard, yeah, like two of the songs off the EP. And he just really gravitated to this song called Tired of Taking L's. And he was like, bro, I have to put this on the blog. I'm like, really? I didn't even ask, to be honest with you. He just threw it in there. And then like, he, like I talked to him on a Tuesday, that Saturday evening, it was placed on Gary B's mom. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. how did you meet Buddy? How did I meet him? Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. You I did. met him. I, I did. Yeah. Huh? No, go ahead. Just go ahead. Yeah, I, I met him on Instagram, man. I just, you know, I do my research, too. That's a lot of things that I do, man. Like, I'm honestly, I use Instagram as a business, honestly. Like, I don't approach it as, like, a consumer. Like, when I'm on there, I'm not just looking at, you know, Instagram models all day and like uh, some funny stuff. Now I'm in it to like who, you know, who in the book. I'm reading their bios. I'm trying to figure out who moving with who. So I saw in his bio, he was like a uh, editor for Gary Vee. I'm like, okay. Hit him up in the DM and, you know, we got to talking and, and, and it was more organic situation because I wasn't I wasn't even like, hey, Gary V the editor, what's going on? Hey, put me put Put my song in. No, it was none of that. We just talked and had a genuine conversation. I let him know some things that I was going through around that time. And, you know, I seen that he was a genuine person, and we just clicked from there. And it was really an organic relationship. Wait, so how did you actually first um, engage with him? You, you slipped him a DM, but, like, what were the words, if you can remember the idea? Oh, okay, uh, if I can remember, I was just like, hey, uh, I was just like, hey, what's going on, man? You know? <laughs> I just I, I slid in on that and he was like, Hey, whatever and we just got to talking. I was like, uh I don't know. I, I pretty much I pretty I, I can't remember word for word, but I know I learned this from your uh, from your networking guy as well. That you know, I just I, I approach online situations like personal situations. Like if I'm physically in somebody's face, you know, I'm not gonna come up to them and be like in your face and be like, Hey, how you doing? Hey, by my, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that. So I, I just basically talked to him and, you know, had, I, I, you know what I did? I think I found, and I like this trick from uh, Gary V. I found a uh, common ground within his, uh, I, I think it was something that I basically, I found common ground within his profile. It was something that, it, I don't know, was it, a, was it a song or something? Something I commented, like, oh, you like this song or whatever, something like that. And he was like, yeah, I love, I can't remember. I really can't remember. I just know we connected off of a song. All right, yeah. But I mean, I, mean, I just like the idea of what you're saying. You're using Instagram as a business. You're using yeah. your research. And then when you engage with people, you're engaging with them as a person versus, yeah, check out my music or blah, blah, blah. You know, that's, that's spam. Yeah, everybody hates spam. You know what I mean? So yeah. why spam somebody? And and also, I learned that find find common ground thing from like when I do interviews, when I like for working, like nine to five. Like when I walked into uh, the uh, the recruiter's office, I noticed that he was he, like he was in the fish. You know what I mean? He was running a lot of you know Bass Pro championships and stuff like he had a lot of trophies. And I just spoke, oh, you like fishing? Yeah, I just went fishing last week. It just built an organic conversation. Yeah, and you know, and it's and and people can see through. The BS, you know, and people can see if you really like, really doubt what you're talking about, you know. What I mean? yeah. So I, I never try to, you know, BS anybody. It's just you know, I come from a real place, so you don't call out yeah. something that you really can't talk about. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, don't play yourself. That's definitely one of yeah. your laws. Exactly. Okay. So, do you um co collab with people often? By the way. Um, uh, I do. I collab with people, but like to be honest, I haven't collab. It's been talks. It's been talks. Uh, I actually uh, collaborated with uh, Young Bleed on accident. You know, who Young Bleed is. The, uh, he's he used to be signing No Limit. Um, how you do that there? No, 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 we don't care. I yeah. collaborated with him on accident. I actually did a song for this producer in Canada. You know, we clicked on Instagram. We clicked, and he was like, I just want to get you on the song. I'm like, okay. I just did it, you know, because, you know, he asked. I'm like, cool. 
I never did like a featured situation where somebody I, I, from over, not overseas, but out of the country before. So um, he was like, yeah, he kept saying, yeah, you know, Young Bleed going to be on Young. I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, some some independent artist, some local artist. That's what I'm thinking. Turns out he's like, yeah, that's that's Young Bleed from No Limit Records. I'm like, oh, I didn't know. As a matter of fact, he was on the original uh, I Smoke, I Drink. I smoke. Yeah. But like I said, that was on accident. I didn't know. Okay. So that's like as far as the collaboration, as far as big as I went, but as far as locally, it's in talks, especially come this upcoming year. But like honestly, I didn't I didn't I my plan is to get out there and collab with more artists. But when I was creating creating my project, I just wanted people just to hear me. Mm-hmm. Get the first impression, let the be the rest of the best impression, you know. Got it. Okay. That's what I was gonna ask because it seems like a lot of your moves our solo dolo moves. Yeah. Around. At some point, it seems like the knees, that's gonna, like you gonna hit a ceiling. And a lot yeah. of Yeah, oh, almost definitely. It's gonna be taxing. Most definitely. But the thing is, another way I'm approaching this game is um, not only collaborating with artists, but like I've been talking to a few tech companies as well. Mm-hmm. So I've been talking to them, like a few of the CEOs of like these startups and stuff like that and kind of collabing with them, you know what I mean, to get more awareness using their product. And you know, but as far as yeah, other yeah, I'm I'm it's not that I'm not open to collab. It's just honestly, bro, like people just be talking. You know, the people just be talking. It's just like I'm ready. I'm I'm ready. Whatever. Whoever wants to collab, but you know, people are busy. Yeah. All right, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty willing. I, I'm not no stuck up individual. Like I'm, I'm nah. I would love to collab with people. Honestly, you just don't play that game. Yeah, I just don't. If if they if if it's like okay, let's collab. I'm I'm ready. Like if we set a time and date, let's do it. But it's just like oh, it's all excuses, and I, I don't have time for excuses. Man, I'd rather just go by myself. You know? Hey, <laughs> makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Um, what I could find, though, a lot of times just when talking to artists and just even knowing from my own individual experience in doing mm-hmm. stuff, like, mm-hmm. all right, you'll get in this habit of, all right, the people aren't moving fast enough for me or I don't feel like playing this game. So you just go, all right, you can go back to your own thing. Like, F it. Right. You make my own progress and it just keeps happening. It keeps happening. Yeah. It doesn't move fast enough for you. But over time, yeah. eventually, it's like, all right, I got to figure out some way to create some form of patience and look at the time I'm spending on building some of these relationships mm-hmm. and progress in the same way I think about making the other type of progress, like getting a task done or releasing the project True. and using it making money. Like sometimes True. you don't see that immediate result, but it's happening. You just got to be the will to slow down. And oh, that's that. true. That's true. Indeed. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and the thing is I'm patient, but it's just, you can you can just kind of tell when people just full of it, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, like, I'm saying don't use your discernment. You got to be able to judge. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are they're talking. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's in due time, man. It's it's. I know it's gonna crack. I already know. It's just uh-huh. in due time. Trust me. Do you travel much? Yeah, I've been traveling a lot. I just left from DC, uh, promoting the conference by you know just kind of like. You know, building and connecting with other people. You're from uh, what conference in DC? The, no, no, the conference that we're, we're throwing in August. Yeah, so we're connecting with some of the panelists there, and just you know, just you know, building up certain things. So by the time by the conference coming, you know, we'll be ready. Um, the conference is in DC or it's in St. Louis? No, it's in Cincinnati. Excuse me. It's in Cincinnati. Hmm. Yeah. Excuse me. Okay. So this is Cincinnati, Ohio. And um yeah, I travel like I said, I just went to Atlanta. Uh, and I went to uh yeah, I went to Atlanta the A three C. I went to Rico Love's music conference for two years in a row in Indianapolis. Went to Vegas. You know, so I do some traveling. Definitely. What are you getting from, from these different scenes that you go throughout? Oh uh, man, I'm just noticing like just the for one, I'm noticing like the different demographics, like Honestly, every time I hop hop in the Uber, like I'm making my business to like let people hear my music. 
Like every time I get in the Uber or Lyft, I make it my business. Like especially in Vegas, as soon as they were, you know, I, I listen. As soon as they were, you know, listen to certain, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen to this. Uh, I'm you not know, rap. You know what I mean? And they end up playing my stuff or whatever. So that was cool. But um, yeah, I'm noticing like just the different, like how West Coast, like the sound, just different sounds for different regions. You know. Okay. Have you actually gotten a fan from an Uber though? Say it again. Have you actually gotten a fan from playing your music in an Uber? A fan, not necessarily a fan, but just somebody who's playing and rocking with it. I didn't get back in touch with him because it was so fast. So it was like, hey, listen to this. He playing it. Boom. I jump out. No, no. When I went to A3C, I'm lying. When I went to A3C, that night when I put up the hotel. And he just dropped me off. It was an Uber. Yeah, and me and him still in contact. Because he was originally from... Uh, he was originally from New York. Okay. And yeah, we still. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. All right, so you just really just practicing your pitch over and over again, no matter where you are. Most at. definitely. Most definitely. Everywhere I go, I just make sure. Uh, even when we went to the gym, we was up in the gym in the hotel. I just, hey, like I, was, I got some workout music for you. And he's like, oh, okay. And he started playing one of the songs. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he had it in his headphones. So, yeah, it's just wherever wherever I'm at, I'm going to make sure I network. Got you. Try to, you know, build it up. But, like, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I understand as an artist that people are diverse. People are always going to talk about being diverse. But what energy do you feel like you have? Like, what do you want to represent as an artist yourself? Man, uh, honestly, just ambitions, like, like the ultimate hustle. Like, my main mission, to be honest with you, is to create a new genre called mobile music. Mobile music. Mobile music, yes. Like and that's like the ultimate hustle music. Okay. Say it again? Yeah, M-O-G-U-L, right? Yeah, yeah, like the ultimate hustle music. Because every time people's like, like, Everywhere I go, I'm wearing one of these shirts, right? right. Everywhere I go, I'm always stamped, you know, Cooper Trill. Um, just just everybody who I talk to, like, I learned from you. He was like, your brand is not what you think about yourself, but what the people think about you. Yeah. So everywhere I go, honestly, the people who do know me, it's like, bro, you inspire me. Like, like just the, uh, like, what was that? Like, two weeks ago, I had went to an event, and, like, a few of the homeboys just like, bro, it's the motivation. Every time I see your Instagram, bro, you motivate me. Like, everybody who talks to me, whether they're in college, whether they're in the hood, who, wherever, like, they're like, I want, like, like you inspire me, man. Like, and in my, one of my uh, partners, he called me, he he said that I'm like Steve Stout, Dame Dash, or Gary Vee if they were rappers. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, bro. He said, you, he said your music is the type of music I listen to before I hit a busy meeting. Or before, you know, if I'm too lazy to finish my mid or finish my paper or whatever, finish whatever, I'll play your music and get motivated to keep going. Okay. So I was like, okay. And just the moves that I make, man, like you said, it's, 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 it's moves. Like it's, I'm steady climbing. I'm steady climbing. So I think people are, they fascinated with and they're inspired by it. And that's my main mission. That's my main mission is just to inspire people. So like I said, the mobile music thing is like just the ultimate hustle. Like I don't want like, I don't want it to be just about trap. Like, okay, if we trapping, let's talk about trapping and flipping it to some legal money. You know what I mean? Or, you know, the ultimate hustle, you know? Like, actually building a brand because my thing is, man, I want to, my main mission is, like, to, to spark the minds to create a whole nother Black Wall Street. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so, that's my mission, man. <laughs> In a nutshell. I don't know too many artists that, um, have a clear vision of their mission just yet, but it sounds like you have one for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you sit down and like meditate on that and figure it out or was it just always natural to you or just happen? Over Man, time? I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I had watched Hidden Colors, the first one. Okay. And I learned that they said that we're taught to go to school, go to college to be good workers instead of going to school to own and, and own a business. Mm -hmm. So that stuck with me. I was like, damn, we are, that's the reason why we're still working. You know what I mean? 
And then also, I, so that that motivated me to make a song years ago called Boss Up or whatever. And I was like, we're going to boss up. And then honestly, following Nipsey Hussle, like he's the ultimate hustle to me right now as far as this generation is concerned. Like, like everything he was doing, like his first interview, he was like, I'm talking, he was like, I'm spending my money on assets instead of liabilities. So, you know, I still that type of mindset. I adopted that type of mindset. And that was just like, like and then, I don't know, I don't know, man, I apply a lot of my reality. What's going on in my, uh, I apply my reality, my music, whatever. So, you know, as you know, from St. Louis, you know, we had the riots go on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I looked at it like, you know what, if we had our own community, None of that. I don't think that it would have happened if you don't, if you catching what I'm saying. Yeah, that makes sense. So, you yeah, you so I want to. You wouldn't break down your own shit if you owned it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's my main mission. I want to be like the soundtrack behind it. That. Hmm. Not want to be, I'm going to be. <laughs> the Got soundtrack. It. So the soundtrack behind the, 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 yes. work, the work for a mission. Yes. Work for something big. Yes. Hustle. The ultimate hustler, man. Like, basically, like, in a nutshell, man, not to be long winded, just. The ultimate grinding for your last name, not for your first. Got it. Yeah. All right. I like that. I think that's a good good way to end it, man. Is there any last words that you want to just, you know, put them on to? Tell them what the oh, man. stuff. Follow me, man. I got a YouTube. That's why y'all see this YouTube background, man. I'm going to shoot a video right after this interview. Uh, follow my YouTube, Coop the Trill. Um, all my social media is at Coop the Trill, that's C O O P D A T R I L L E. Um, you can follow, like I said, follow my YouTube, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all of that. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned, man. I got we got some singles coming, and you know, steady just moving, man. Just 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 keep watching. Bet. And oh, oh, and if you and if you want to be a part of the conference, if you want to go to the conference, make sure that you hit me up too, as well. All right, y'all heard that. Maybe you want to be a part of that conference? Maybe you might be one of those people that get in contact with the supervisor and get you a place, man, a nice little check along with it. Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, man. Hey, everybody, want to know what your thoughts? Put that in the comment section below. Um, and always, you can check some of the bonuses that I'll be having that in the uh, description below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like it, might as well share it. And if you're not, subscribe. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.